it came streaming down for me. Lord, I'm thankful for the blood. When I think of Calvary, if it had not been for Jesus, don't know where I would be. If it had not been for mercy and the blood he shed for me. Gave the world redemption's plan. There's no greater love than this love. Laid his life down for a friend. Oh, the blood it made the difference. Gave the world redemption's plan. There's no greater love than this love. Laid his How about we stand all over this place right now and let's just open this year up with a hand clap of praise and lift our voices up at the same time. 
Come on. We worship you, God. We worship you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you brought us through another year, God. We love you, Lord. We worship you, God. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome everybody here at the house of the Lord. I'm excited to see you here. And I decided, I'm decided glad that you made it through another year. Hallelujah. God kept us and protected us and watched over us. And But I'm glad that today is another day and another year that I can still serve the Lord. I'm glad I'm still in the church. I said, I'm glad I'm still in the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's open this thing up with prayer right now. If you have a need, you can make your way around the front. We'll pray for you. God, we love you. We ask you right now to have your perfect will in this place, God, to minister in this sanctuary, God, according to your will and according to your way. We ask you, God, as your word goes forth, that it goes forth with free course without hindrance, oh God. We want it to saturate our hearts and our souls and our mind and our spirit. Lord, in Jesus' name, why don't we worship the Lord right now? Sister Haley, she sings. I feel some, I was praying, me and Brother Sagel was here this morning praying, and I, I felt it so strong. I said, God, I don't want it just to start in the second service. I want it, God, it's already started right now, I said, as we were praying. I said, I, I want it to be in the, in, the, in the practices, God. I want it to be in the first service. And then I said, God, I don't want the first service to be a setup for the second service. But rather, I want them to be hand in hand, a hand in a glove. I want, I want them to work together. And uh, I, I feel to have her to sing this song again. And I, I know we don't normally do this in the first service. 
but why don't you move out from where you're at if you feel like it, and even if it's around this front, or, or whether you stay where you're at, why don't you just begin to worship God, thanking Him for what He done last year in anticipation of what He's going to do this year. Come on, sing it. of a praise right now when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me. <laughs> I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. You can make your way back to your seats. Remain standing. Hallelujah. Brother Sagely to get ready to come. I felt probably a month ago, Brother Sagely can vouch for this, that he would be doing the first service and that I would be doing the second service. And, um, and then I really felt it uh, so strong. And I, I felt, I've never told him what, uh, we may talk about something if he's going to teach a topic or whatever, but I, I said, I feel to go in the direction of faith. I said, I, I really feel uh, that, that in this service. And I said, I, I'm, I'm going to do the second service and do it the same way. And, uh, and say, and he agreed, and so I want him to get ready to come. Appreciate him so much uh, for his loyalty, and I appreciate for what he does for this church. Hallelujah, <laughs> Sister Sagely too. Appreciate it very, very much. All that she's done. Hallelujah, and I'm uh, so thankful for that. But I want him to come, take his liberty in the Holy Ghost. How many still help him? Hallelujah, Brother Sagely. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. So good to be in the house of the Lord today. Tell you, I count it a privilege to be able to start off the revival of 2023. He could have had, uh, had Cody Marks here preaching today, but he chose me. I appreciate that, brother. But it is good to be in the house of the Lord. I appreciate Brother Mills, my pastor, my man of God, giving me this opportunity today uh, to speak to the greatest church. I believe on earth, to be honest with you. You know, I'm sure the, I'm sure the, I'm sure the people down the road uh, probably feel the same way that I feel about their church. I'm sure it's so good to have Brother Marty Shimwell with us. I'm sure he feels that way about Union City. But uh, you, ought to, you ought to think your church is the best. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you don't feel that way, well, that's your problem. Praise the Lord. But uh, I do appreciate this church. I love this church. Matter of fact, Brother Mills 
talked earlier about us being here um, praying earlier today. And I can tell you, I prayed for every one of you here if you're a part of this church. And uh, I'm going to tell you that the devil did not turn in his resignation yesterday. If he fought you in 2022, and this ain't my message, if he fought you in 2022, he's going to fight you in 2023. So you might as well go ahead and, and get your mind made up that, that you're going to be in the battle, you're going to fight, and you're not going to give up because he's going to keep coming at you. If you're here today and you have children and are not living for God, and that, that you, you're trusting is going to begin to live for God this year, you better have faith. You better have a made-up mind that you're not going to give up on them, that you're going to keep praying for them, you're going to keep reaching for them. Praise the Lord. If the devil's fight, I pray for marriages. I pray for, I pray for young couples, and I pray for their marriages. I, I pray for older. I pray for my marriage. If the devil has fought your marriage in the past, he's going to fight your marriage in the future. He's not going to give up. He's not going to stop. He's going to fight you every step of the way. You have to make your mind up to fight him and overcome him. Praise the Lord. I don't know where all that come from, but I felt to say it. If you have your Bible, turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to be reading verses 3 through 12. Brother Mills mentioned he, he, he asked that we speak on the topic of faith, and mine may be totally different from his, but uh, I feel like this is the, what the Lord has given me to share. But if you, if you have it, say amen. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 12. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if, be, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, and whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching of what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Pastor Mills, if you would pray. Clap our hands and the Lord is receded. Praise the Lord. In his book, Six Hours, One Friday, Max Licato tells the story of how he and his boat survived a hurricane. An old man gave Max the advice to take his boat to deep water, drop four anchors off each corner of the boat, and pray that the anchors held. Max survived that storm, but he says that he learned an important lesson. All of us need an anchor that will hold during the storms of life. If I could for just a little while today, I want to talk to you on the subject of anchored faith. Anchored faith. Faith is our anchor. What have you, I ask you today, what have you put your faith in? How important is it to have faith, Brother Worley? Where do you find a faith strong enough to make it through the storms of life? Peter knows how important faith is, and he gives us a great picture of faith, a faith that we can anchor deep with, 
a faith which will hold us during the storms of life. I can tell you right now from the very onset of this message, you will not make it through some things in life without faith. You will not make it through some storms that you go through in life without faith and where you have that faith anchored at. Praise the Lord. When Peter wrote this letter, things were changing. In the beginning of the first century church, the government remained unconcerned about this new religious sect. As the church grew, the constructions of the government, constrictions of the government increased. Peter is writing to a people who are finding it increasingly difficult to live their faith. Even today, you may say that being a Christian is not easy. But we must find, you and I must find a way to live out our faith. You and I must find a way to get some determination to make it through the things that you're going through. If, if you don't have a backbone, you're not going to make it. If you don't have an anchor of faith, you're not going to make it in this hour that we live in. Praise the Lord. Peter helps us gain some insight into how, into how to live an authentic Christian or Christ-centered faith in the midst of of most difficult times. Anybody ever been through a hard time? Anybody ever been through a storm in life that you just didn't know how in the world you were going to make it through it? Anybody been through that? I know we all have at some time or another. But you'll find in, in, in verses 4 and 5 of our scripture that this is a timeless faith. The question is not whether or not we have faith. Everyone here today has faith in some way by, by demonstrating as and you've heard this example many times by demonstrating getting in your car and, and just turning the key you have faith that your car is going to start praise the Lord you have faith when you left your house today that you were going to make it to this destination that's an example of faith the atheist has faith that his rational reasoning has removed the possibility of there being a God even the atheist has faith. He has a faith. He has faith in his intellectual ability. Others have faith in their abilities, their skills, their connections, their friends, their family, and even in themselves. If you don't have your faith in, in, in anything else, you need to have faith in yourself. Right. Praise the Lord. Right. If you if you don't if you don't trust and and and, and depend on any, you need to de de depend on yourself. Yeah. So we all have faith. The question is where. Is our faith anchored? Where is it anchored at? Sooner or later, the storms of life will begin to blow, and then the question becomes will the anchor of faith hold? Will what I have it tied to? Will it hold? Peter gives us three reasons that is important that shows how important it is to anchor our faith in Jesus. First, Faith in, in Christ is imperishable. How can that be? Well, look where faith in Christ is kept, in heaven. Jesus says that we are to put up treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy and the thief cannot steal. If you set up your faith anywhere else or anywhere in this world, it's, it's subject to one day be gone. Because everything in this world it's perishable. Everything in this world is just, it's just here for a season and then it's gone. So that's why you have, to, you have to make sure that your faith is anchored in the things of heaven. Countless kingdoms have come and fallen. Economies have been built and destroyed and nations have been established and vanished. All that is left of some of those kingdoms are the ruins that you can go find in a museum today. They were here one day, may have been there for many, many, many years, but eventually they were gone. Only the kingdom of God has remained constant in the past 2,000 plus years. Our faith is to be set in heaven and not in the things of this world. That is the only way that we know our faith will never perish. It's an imperishable faith. Secondly, our faith will be uncorrupted. You may have heard the phrase that absolute power 
corrupts absolutely. It is a statement which indicates our sinful nature. History is full of leaders who started off, Sister Barbara Anthony, with the best intentions. They had lofty goals. They had plans. They had dreams. But the power that they had corrupted them and ultimately brought them down and brought them to their demise. There, we understand, though, if, if we place our faith in a leader, it is but a matter of time before the corruptible nature of the individual is revealed. Every one of us, as much as I love my man of God, as much as I, as highly as I esteem him, he's corruptible. He, he, he's, he walks around, brother, brother Shemwell, in this flesh, and this flesh can never be perfected. So if you put your faith only, and I'm just using him as an example because I know he don't mind. If you only put your faith in him and you don't put your faith no farther than him, you're going to be disappointed. He's going he's gonna to do something. He's going to say something that you don't like, whether it's justified for you to be upset. Or, you're going to find a reason to find fault in a man. That's why you have to put your faith in the King of kings and the Lord of lords who can never be corrupted, who is perfect from, from the beginning of time. He was perfect. There's no pride or ego in the power of Jesus. In the scope of eternity, Jesus is the only person who has absolute power. But not only that, he is also the only person in whom absolute power Brother Shannon has not corrupted even a little bit. Our faith can only be incorruptible when it's placed in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thirdly, our faith in the Lord is unfading. I know of a lot of people, and you probably do too, that they go through fads in life. I, I, I've been that person. Bro, I, look, I played pickleball for four months. It turned out to just be a fad. Here I am now, I'm trying to work out with my young son-in-laws, and I can't guarantee that that won't be a fad. But hey, we're going we gonna to be in this fad for a little while. We say, hey, I'm in that crowd as a new year, new me. Ain't that what everybody does every year? New year, new me? Hey, I'm just trying, so we'll see how long it lasts. Praise the Lord. My shoulder hurts right now. I can tell you that much. But they jump on the latest trend or idea in about six months or a year down the road. They jump on something new. If you need an example, you can just go out, go, go home when you, when you get home later and you can, you can pull out your yearbooks or your picture albums and just look back at the clothes that you wore and the, and the tone of the culture and you'll see how much things have changed from the last 20 years. Or 30 years. Everything is it's a fad. It just comes and it goes. It's constantly changing. Now they may come full circle and things are, but it, eventually it, it'll keep going. It's a fad. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not a fad with him. It's never fading with him. It's going to always be the same. If anything, it'll just get more and more powerful the more you put your faith in Him. Praise the Lord. And the faith we have now will see us through the last days. Praise the Lord. So we, have a, we find in those three examples that we have a timeless faith. The next thing I want to mention from verses 6 through 8 of our scripture is, our, is a tested faith. Our faith must be anchored in the timeless nature of the Lord. But I can hear now some of us are asking the question, how do you know that a faith in Jesus will hold up during the storms of life? First of all, I'd, ask you, I'd, I'd ask, answer that question by asking you, have you tried? Have you tried him yet? Praise the Lord. Why should I trust the Lord? Because this is no ordinary faith. It is a tested faith. This is not just some fly-by-night situation. Where this is something that goes back from eternity. From, from the beginning of time, it's going to go all the way through eternity. I just told you that our Lord never changes. 
He's the same yesterday, today, and, for, and whatever worked with him 2,000 years ago will work with him now, and it will work with him 2,000 years from now. Our God is not going to change. Our, the power of our God is never going to diminish. Praise the Lord. The power of our God, if anything, it's only going to get greater. It's a tested faith. It's been tried and it's been proven. Praise the Lord. Countless people have placed their faith in the Lord and found that that anchor still holds. Peter survived some incredible storms of life. And he says here is what I found the faith of the Lord to be when it is put to the test. He said I found it to be tested. I found it to be a tested faith is valuable, revealing, and centered in love. So let's talk about it being valuable from verse 7. Peter here plays upon a great image when he talked about the goldsmith. A goldsmith would melt down the gold until it became a liquid. And all the impurities would come to the top of the surface and the goldsmith would scrape them off and allow the metal to cool. He would then come back and repeat this process over and over and over. His goal was not just some half done project. He wanted pure gold. He wanted pure gold. How did he know he, when he had pure gold? When no impurities would, would come to the surface or when he could see his reflection in the melted gold. Peter says that our faith is like gold as it is tested. It will begin to bring the imp impurities to the surface. When the impurities are removed, our faith becomes more valuable. When you get everything out the way, all the impurities, all the distractions of life, when you begin to get all the clutteredness out of your life and, and just let it be full faith in the Lord, that's when it becomes powerful. That's when it becomes something that can move a mountain. That's when you begin to see miracles take place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When the impurities are removed, our, our faith becomes valuable. Gold is the standard by which many define value. We say things like, it's worth its weight in gold. Or the golden boy. I'm sure some of y'all think y'all the golden boy. <laughs> or the golden age. That's just phrases we use dealing, when we talk about gold. In Peter's world and in ours, gold was considered one of the most valuable things a person could have. Now, I know it fluctuates as far as value on the market, but in that time, it was valuable. While gold is valuable, it is secondary to your faith. Secondary to your faith. Praise the Lord. Gold can perish. One day it's going to be worth nothing. It's going to be worthless. But your faith will endure. It will always hold value. You can't, you can't make it. You got to understand how valuable faith is. You can't make it without it. You, you can't, I'm just telling you, you can't go a day without faith in some sort. But when it comes to the things of the eternal elder meals, you better have faith. You, you're not going to begin, you're not going to see things happen that you want to see. You're not going to see your lost loved ones saved if you don't, if you don't believe it. If you don't trust it and believe it enough to go to the, to the throne of God and say, God, I got to see them saved. If you don't have faith for that, it's not going to happen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A faith, a faith in Jesus Christ will carry us through, life, through this life and even into the world to come. A faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is far more valuable than gold. Our faith is something eternal, not in something that can be destroyed. Praise the Lord. You also find from verse 7 that that our faith in the Lord, it is revealing. The goldsmith knew that he, had, that he had pure gold when he could see his reflection in the metal. Our faith should reflect Jesus and reveal him to the world. 
You know, you can run around, we can, we can look as much apostolic as we want to. But if we go in the community and we don't, if, if we don't portray faith, if we don't promote faith and say, hey, I believe this can happen in your life. Hey, I see you're going through something, but I, I know a God that can meet your need. If you don't have that when you go out, you're not reflecting Christ. You're not reflecting the Lord. You're not reflecting your relationship with Him. As we grow in our walk with the Lord, we learn more about Him and His love. It is only through a life given to Jesus will we begin to see Him as He really is. As our faith grows, more about the deeper nature of, of the Lord is revealed to us. The end result of a Christ-centered faith is, is that our lives are shaped and molded by Him. In order, you, for, in order for you to get where you need to be in your walk with God, you got to have faith. you got to have faith for that. Our faith begins to reflect that, that deeper knowledge of Jesus. Our lives will begin to change when you and I live differently because our faith is growing. Those around us will begin to see the difference. I don't want them to see the old Scott. I don't want them to see what I used to be. I want them to see what I'm becoming and what I'm trusting God to bring me to. That's the kind of faith that I want. I'm trusting God to bring me all the way to where He wants me to be. I don't want to, I don't want to stop halfway. I want to have faith that I'm going to make it all the way. Praise the Lord. Just as the goldsmith knew he had pure gold, when he looked into the metal and could see his reflection, Jesus desires to see his reflection in you and I. That can only happen in a refined, a refined faith that has been tested. In verse 8, you'll find that our faith is centered on our love for the Lord. Peter talks about how we love Christ even though we have not seen him. In Hebrews, we have the very definition of faith and you know very familiar, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. The essence of faith is it does not require our sight. We don't have to see it to know that it is real or that it is coming. We don't have to be able to lay our eyes on it. How many of you have seen Jesus? But do you believe he's coming? Amen. Amen. Just because something is not seen does not negate its existence. I'll give you another example. Have you ever seen your brain other than on an x-ray? I'm willing to bet every single one of us here has a brain. And we haven't seen it. Now, I will admit and I will acknowledge it, and I may be in this group that some brains work to a higher function than others. But we all have a brain. And I put myself in that group. But we all have one. Peter says that real faith and love in a Christ you have never seen, but still knows that he exists. You know, some people have a hard time be believing in, something, in things, Sister Alexander, that they haven't seen. They, they have a hard time getting a hold of, of it because they can't see it and they can't put their hands on it they can't touch it but that's the very essence of faith do you trust him or not do you believe do you do you put your anchor in him your anchor of faith in him or not that's what faith is last thing I want to want to talk about and that you'll find from verses 10 through 12 is true faith true faith and I hope I'm, I'm hope I'm delivering this good I guess Thank you. In our postmodern world, we often hear the statement that what works for you may not work for me. And this is true. This is true. My son-in-laws, they're stronger than me. So the, the weight that they, that they may put on, it, ain't, it may work for them, but Brother Shannon, it ain't going to work for me. Not at this point. I, I need a little time. Now, I think I can catch them. I'm just going to tell you. If I can make... Brother, Brother, Brother Chase, if, if it don't become a fad, if it ain't just a fad, I think I can catch them. But whatever works for you may not work for me. We've heard that. Praise the Lord. So Peter 
had a faith in Christ that was timeless. His faith was valuable, it was revealing, and it was full of love. But how does that mean what worked for Peter will work for me? Almost as if Peter anticipated this question he writes about the faith of others. Now, I need to clarify what I was talking about earlier about what won't work for you will work for me. It don't work like that in the faith world. The, the, the faith, the, the, how faith works for Brother Mills, faith will work for me. Praise, if, if, if faith works for Brother Shemwell, it'll work for me. It's just, it's just who, depend, who, where do you anchor your faith at? Praise the Lord. But Peter anticipated this question. He writes about the faith of others. The prophets of the Old Testament found their faith in God to hold. God spoke to the prophets and told them that the Messiah was coming. Now you got to realize this was a long time before he came. You know, they, you think we have a hard time. Man, they, they, they talking about something that's coming, you know. It, what, it, what, what, they, what, what they wrestle with faith, just like we wrestle with faith, I'm sure they wrestle with faith. But he told them that, they, that a Messiah was coming. And he gave them hope that the one who would come, the one who would come would deliver them. Praise the Lord. He would come and deliver them. The message of the prophets can be summarized as this. Hang on, God is working, get ready, your deliverer is coming. Praise the Lord. Doesn't that sound like a message for people even today? Doesn't that sound like a, a message for people who are at the end of their rope? For people who don't know where to turn? Even in this hour, it is a message of hope and encouragement. It is a promise. How many people do you know that need to be encouraged today to not give up? Just have some faith. Just have some faith. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Just hold on. How many people even in this room today that need to know that help is on the way? Maybe you're, you're struggling with some things and, and you don't know where to turn. I'm telling you today, just, just anchor your faith in the Lord. Just have, some love, just have some faith and make sure it's anchored in the right spot. Praise the Lord. Maybe you need to know and need to hear that God's promises or for you also. Not just for the prophets of old time, but his promises are for you today. Yes. That is the message of the Old Testament prophets. Peter points out that the true faith is not only tried or tied to the prophets, but also to the fulfillment of those prophecies. There's a faith in the suffering and crucifixion of Jesus. A lecturer once said, and I won't be much longer. A lecturer once said that Christianity is the only religion which cannot reinvent itself. Christianity. All other religions are based on philosophical basis. Other religions have been created out of the human mind. Things that people just came up with. They went on to state that if all religions were wiped from the face of the earth, some would, someone could come along have the same thoughts and ideas and recreate any of those false religions. But not so with Christianity. Our faith is built upon the prophecies of the Old Testament. And that don't change. Praise the Lord. Prophecies which said a Messiah is coming. Our faith is built upon Jesus. We believe that He is the Messiah, the embodiment of the Old Testament prophecies. We believe that he died on a cross for our sins and that he rose again. And he'll never have to do that again. So you can't wipe Christianity off the mouth and then recreate it. Because he don't have to do that again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We believe that he died and, and rose again. We believe that he is coming back. If all of Christianity were to be destroyed, how could we recreate it in our minds? We could not. Our faith is not built upon philosophy, intellect, or creative speculations. Our faith is built upon the historical fact that Jesus, God's only son, died on a Roman cross in Jerusalem on a hill called Golgotha. Our faith cannot be recreated, but thank God it is our faith which has stood the test of time. It has proven itself faithful when tested. And it's the only true faith which holds in the storms of life. 
And in verse 12, Peter then talks of how the faith of the Old Testament and the Gospels is for these present days. If someone could come to the music. Peter literally says, angels desire to look into these things. Can you imagine what that must be like? I want you to picture angels leaning over the rim of heaven, Brother Mills. And they're looking down at you and I today. They're looking down at the church as a whole. They have seen what God did with the prophets. They have seen how Jesus fulfilled the prophecies with his birth, life, death, and resurrection. The angels, Elder Mills, have seen Lucifer get kicked out of heaven. They've seen these things. They've seen the resurrection of Christ. They've seen the dead raised. They've seen the Red Sea parted. They've seen demons exercised. But what they desire to see is what is God going to do now? What is God going to do amongst His people now in this hour? They're looking into these things. The angels are watching you and me. And they want to know, are are we going to allow our faith to be anchored in the Lord? Are we going to allow our faith to be joined? They want to see what happens when our faith comes together with the Lord. They want to see what miracles take place when our faith is joined with the Lord. The question is, is there anybody who's going to have faith today and anchor it in Him? Praise the Lord. How will our faith in God's great actions meet? It could be very, very well that we're like Esther and we were brought to a kingdom for such a time as this. Our time to live and have faith is today. I say it again that If there's things that you're wanting God to do, you need to have faith. You need to have faith. You need to begin to trust Him for it. You don't need need to be doubting and wavering. You need to say, God, I know that you can do this. God, I've I've read about and seen things that you've done in the past. And God, I know that my problem and my situation is not too hard for you. Praise the Lord. Let's stand all over this place. In closing, I want to say that again, all of us have faith. But will you anchor your faith to the Lord? When the storms of life come your way, will your anchor hold? Will you be able to say, I put all my trust in Him, the one who is able to keep me and get me through? It's not a question today of if you have faith or not. It's not a question of if the storms of life will come. The question is, will your anchor hold? Time to anchor your hope and faith to Jesus is now, before the next storm comes. If you're in the middle of something right now and you're you're needing to trust God today, I want to open these altars to you. I want to open the front of this church to everybody to come down and say, God, oh, I put my faith in you. God, I know that you're the only one, God. You're the only one, God, that can help. You're the only one, God, that can make me, help me see my miracle. You're the only one, God, that can help me see my lost loved ones saved. I open the front of this church up right now. Would somebody come? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, as she sings, let's just talk to the Lord for a few moments.
Hallelujah. Would you link up with someone for just the next few moments as she sings? Let's link up with someone and pray with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In spite of the storm, the anchor holds, though the ship is battered. Can you sing it? The yeah. anchor holds, the Hallelujah. How many enjoyed that today? Hallelujah. Great job. Great job. Couldn't help but think, Brother Shannon, I remember when I had my boat, there'd be times I think I was anchored. Be in some little current or something, next thing you know, I look, and I done moved. and didn't even realize how much I had drifted. And, uh, but I'd been drifting the whole time thinking I was anchored. If your anchors don't hold, you got to make sure you're anchored to something that's solid, something that's good. And that's what he's talking about today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great job, Sagely. And uh, I, I, I believe we can have that faith. I got that supernatural faith that my son in law is, is not stronger than I am. Hallelujah. Supernatural faith. Y'all just mentioned Jesus' name.
why don't we all go ahead and go ahead and gather in and begin to talk to the Lord. Let's find us somewhere to pray. Turn our attention to Him in this next service. We're looking forward to what God's going to do in this place.
that you're reading today. Hallelujah, Lord, anoint you. Hallelujah. Come on, if you hadn't already joined us in prayer, go ahead and pray with us right now. Hallelujah. You want God to use the man of God in this place. We want him to use the singers and the musicians in this place today. Hallelujah. God, we come to you, Lord. We ask you, God, for your strength and help in this place, God. Lord, we want you to have your way in the house. We want your perfect will, God, to be done in this place. Hallelujah. It all, it's all starts in pre-service prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we lift you up, King. 